So here we go. So when it comes to animate and transfer, and we want to route entities, instead of using the flow chart, we're going to route entities in real life. We can use the, the layout of the shop floor. We can use the, um, if you're at Cummins, we could use the CAD model of the shop floor and how things actually move around. We could actually have the carts or the forklifts or whatever driving around the shop floor instead of watching those things drive around in a flow chart, which really doesn't represent anything. So the animation now is actually going to represent what we're actually doing. Um, so what we want to do is, all right, so we don't have the, the, the template up. First thing we need to do is go to File, and we're going to go to Template Panel, Attach, and we want the Advanced Transfer Template. The Advanced Transfer Template is going to give me the ability to do these animations that I really want to do. So the Advanced Transfer Template, double click on it. Um, let me just take a look again. Yeah, it's called Advanced Transfer. Yep, that's it. It just says Advanced Transfer.tpo. Yep, that's the one you want. So when you go in there now, is it showing up like you got a bunch of red and green ones over here now? Okay, so you're in the right one then. Now what we want to do is these red and green things, um, they represent how we're going to route. And what I will tell you is typically when we route, we route from station to station. We're connecting the dots. Um, just like if you're walking into Dunwoody and you're coming to this classroom, you're walking from the entrance up to the classroom. And you probably always take the same path to get there. If you, you know what I mean? So, you know, maybe rarely you would end up taking a different path to get there. So what I'm going to do just for this purpose is I'm going to, I'm going to create a, uh, let's see what we did in here actually. Okay. So what we did in here was we created a, a simple model. You know, before we even do this though, let's do this. Let's go into, let's go into Microsoft Word. I kind of like doing it in Word. So open up Microsoft Word, and we're going to create a, a model of a parking lot. So what I want you to do is go to Insert, <clears throat> go to Shape, find this uh, find this this rectangle here. Yep, so we'll go to the Insert tab, Shapes, and then find the, the rectangle that's right there in Microsoft Word. Got it? And then draw a big rectangle on your screen, just like I have right here. You know, maybe about like that. Kind of move it off to the side a little bit. And then what I want you to do is I want you to right click on that rectangle. Once it's created, right click on it and go to Format Shape. And under Format Shape, I want the fill color to be kind of a this dark gray that you see right here and under line color so that was the fill then you also have a line color I want no line and now you have what kind of looks like maybe almost a parking lot <laughs> all right then what I want you to do is I want to insert um, actually you can copy it hit control C highlight it hit control C control V and then kind of resize it so it looks more like the size of, oop, I'm hitting all kinds of buttons here. Looks more like the size of a, of a road or something, kind of like this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another one of these, copy, control C, control V. I'm going to scrunch this one down a little bit. And I'm going to put it kind of right here. Maybe it's kind of like an entrance to the parking lot. Then control C, control V, and move one down here. And I might even... I might even do that one more time and put one down here. So I'm kind of thinking that, okay, here's what I got. I've got this 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 parking lot over here. Okay. And there's kind of a boulevard where it has an entrance and an exit. Maybe the road continues up over here. Uh, something like that. Don't know. But I've got this this goofy looking parking lot. And what I want to do is I want to create some, some stalls in here that we're going to park in. So I'm going to go to insert. How are you doing so far? Yep, take your time. All 
All right, so now, now that we've got our, did I lose my Word document? Oh, no, it's right here. So now I've got kind of a, a pseudo parking lot. I want to create some spaces in the parking lot. Yep. So I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to go to Shape. I'm going to grab a line. You see this straight line here? All I want you to do is, is draw a line. And once you draw the line, right-click on it. Format shape, make it like a width of two, and then under line color, change it to yellow. Now you got this nice yellow line. So what I'm going to do with this yellow line is I'm going to put it like right here. And then, then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to hit Control C on it, Control V, I'm going to get a bunch of them. And I'm going to kind of space them out like parking stalls. See how I'm doing that? Now, like I said, you could easily get the CAD model of a, a real parking lot or, you know, McDonald's parking lot. You could probably find that online. Um, I'm just kind of creating one on the fly. Grab it. I'm going to create a couple more. Oops. Careful I don't move my parking lot around. There's another one. There's another one. There's another one. Careful not to move your whole... God, I keep doing that. There's another one. You know, I could also, if I wanted to, I could angle them. Kind of turn them on their side a little bit. Something like that. Now the problem is we don't want to get too crazy in the details here. This is not, this is not the purpose of the of the lecture tonight. So what we're going to do is we're going to get something that resembles a parking lot. Okay. So, so the idea is I've got something that resembles a parking lot. Maybe my lines are a little too long. You know, my guy that was putting in these lines was uh, out late partying last night and can't figure out how long to make them or to get them lined up exactly. Okay, so I'm pretty happy. This is kind of my, my pseudo parking lot. I think it's going to work out for me. You have something that's close? All right. So now here's what we're going to do next. What I want you to do, and I like to use the, I like to use the snipping tool for this. Um, what I want you to do is I want you to go ahead and grab the, the snipping tool and just Grab, grab a snapshot of that of that parking lot that you just created. Doesn't matter how big or you know what you include on it. Grab a snapshot of it, right click on it, and hit copy. Yep, so it's under start. I got it right up in my thing, but it might be under accessories. Yep. Snipping tool. Drag a box around it, it'll take a snapshot of the parking lot. Right click on the parking lot and hit copy. And then we're going to go back into Arena. And what I want you to do in Arena is I want you to paste that parking lot into Arena. And let's do this. Let's resize it. Once it's in Arena, make it a little smaller. You know, I made mine just a little bit smaller. I might make it a little smaller yet even. It's a little too big. I don't want it to... I kind of know when I, when I create cars and stuff in Arena... Um, they're not as big as this parking lot is right now. So I'm, I'm resizing it a little bit uh, to be a little bit more in proportion with maybe the size of my cars. Okay, so I've got something like that. And I just put it up here. Called it good. What do you think? Not too shabby? Not too bad. And you resized it a little bit, made it look something like mine? Yes. Okay. 
All right, so the, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our model. All right, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into basic process. I'm going to go and create um, let's see how I did it here. I did a decide. Okay, I guess I can do a decide block. Um, so I'm going to do a create. I'm going to do a decide. Now I typically will either put my, my animation right above my flow chart or right below it. So, so you want to keep them close. So I want to kind of give myself some room to build down here. So there's my create and my decide block. And now what we're going to do that's different is we're going to go into our advanced transfer menu and we're going to grab a couple of features. Every time I create a route, a route is essentially the, the path I'm going to follow to get from point A to point B. Point A and point B are what we call stations. So you can see that I have a station right here. I'm going to call this, I'm going to put this in right here, and it's going to come in as a station. And it's going to come in as station one, and I'm fine with that. Okay. Um, I used to really like to change the name of the stations, and I've kind of gotten away from that idea and just said, you know what? Station one is station one. All right. Um, I used to call them entrance station you know, and stuff like that. Um, I don't know that that's, you know, necessarily helpful or anything. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to hook that guy up. So there's my station. And he's hooked up into here. Now remember, station is just if the, if the route connects the dots, point A to point B. Well, then station is one of the points. That's point A. So then I'm either going to, I'm either going to drive to stall one, or I'm going to drive to stall two. Well, you tell me, if I call this the best stall in the parking lot, because maybe there's a building here that I want to go to, right? Or maybe this is the best stall in the parking lot. If this is the best stall. What determines whether or not I go to that stall or that stall? What? Whether or not there's a car there. If there's a car there, I can't go in that stall, right? So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, okay, well, I can route either to stall one or I can route to stall two. Okay, So I bring in the station as point A. The route is the line that connects point A to point B or point A to point C. Now, whether I go to B or C is determined by whether or not the space is empty. Right. Now, you would have to do a lot of this if you're going to have a nine-stall parking lot, right? However, if I'm just going to do a couple of stalls, this should be enough. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these here, and I'm going to connect it here. So these are my two route icons. Now, something interesting. Notice something here, Moda. You can't connect to the outside of the route. It's a dead in there, but it's not. It really, remember what the route does, is it's looking to move you from point A to point B. So what you need to do is create another station. Okay, so I'm going to create station two, and I'm going to create station three. So that row, it's, it's like a, trans, it's like a transporter. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's exactly right. It's like a dotted line between there and station two. And this one will be a dotted line between there and station three. Okay. okay. Now, I think it's important at this point, it's really important. So you've got stations and you've got routes. And you'll notice we've got all kinds of other stuff. We've got conveyors. We've got transporters. We're going to use all of this stuff eventually. We're not there yet. Um, however, I think at this point it's very important for us to see how routes are going to get used because it, it, just routing from here to here, I don't care. What really is going to be cool is I'm going to come up here now and this is where my routes are actually going to occur. So first things first, before I even do that, I think it's important in my basic process menu, go into basic process and go down to entity spreadsheet. In the entity spreadsheet, I don't want it to be a report. I don't want reports driving around my parking lot. So I'm going to go into my, my thing and I'm going to pick a van. 
Um, there are lots of different things that you can pick and you can even customize this a little bit. And with 3D, it gets crazy. With Arena 3D, you can do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, but all of it, even in Arena 3D, it's all based upon the premise of what we're doing right now. So it's really based upon this. So now I've got a van that's going to come out. Okay. And now what's going to happen is I need to go to my route. So I have a couple of things here. I have route. I have segment, distance, and network. And these are all used for different things. Routing is always going to be used with, or your route is always going to be used with your route. Okay. Your segment is always going to be used with conveyors. And your network is always going to be used with your transporter. And then distance can be used in various ways, shapes, or forms. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, what I want to do right now, though, is I want to route a car into this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to grab my route tool. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. So you grab your route tool. You click on it. Now, what you'll notice here is it's, it's going to default to whatever it thinks the first two stations are. It says, well, I don't see a route that connects station one to station two. Is that what you want? Well, as a matter of fact, it is what I want. So I'm good with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, that's what I want. I'm just going to move it to the side. And then what I'm going to do is you notice your, your icon here. It's a little crosshair with the route. What I'm going to do, and this one always messes me up. We'll see if I get it right this time. Is I'm going to left click once. Nope. I'm going to draw a box. Nope. I'm going to, uh, oh, it's in there. Look. It's actually in there. Um, so the reason I can't see it right now is because of its color. Do you see that? It, it's the same color. Yeah, so I'm going to redo that. I'm going to go back into route. You can actually change the color. Let me see if, if yellow maybe helps. I don't know. No, it didn't help at all. It didn't change anything. All right, let's try this one more time. Can I send this to the back? Send it back. This might help. If I send that to the back of my menu. Pick a different color. Yeah, still nothing. Okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. So where I clicked there, I clicked right here. I did one single left click. You'll notice how station one got grayed out. See how it got grayed out over here? So that means station one's been assigned to this point. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. Hold on, hit escape once. Let's try this one more time. Hit route, left click and hold. No, you don't want to do that either. Left click, left click again to set a corner. That's right. So, so yeah, so, so watch this mode. Are you ready? Watch me one time. I go to route, I left click to start the setting or set the starting point. I, I go up to here, I left click to where I'm going to drive to, then I'm going to turn and I got a straight line. I left click again, I left click again. Yep, I left click again, and then when I get into the space, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to double left click, and that's going to set it. Oh, there we go. Check that out. So it didn't give me the new color until I actually placed it. But now I can see that this car is going to drive in in that manner. Now you can still make modifications. You can still drag these around a little bit, you know, and, and make them a little more vertical if you need to. You know, if I want to drag this one up a little bit, you know, and make it make it look good. So this is the route. This is going to be the route that goes between station one and station two. Now. Go back down to where we are here. So that's going to be the route that's going to take a car from this station to that station. This route. This route is going to go from what station to what station? No. It's going to go route station one to station three. So this one routes from station one to station two. This one routes from station one to station three. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back up to my animation. 
I'm going to grab my route tool again, and I want to go from station 1 to station 3. Okay? And then I want to... I really want to left click on that same starting point if I can. So I'm going to put my crosshairs right in the middle of it. See how I did that? Left click. Go up to here. Left click. Go up to here. Left click. Here, left click. Here, left click. But then I'm going to drive into this spot. So it's going to follow a very similar path, right? But it's going to take stall two is what it's going to take instead of stall one. All right. Now, what I want to do is I really would like to be able to test this. So I'm going to go back down to where I've got my stations here. And all I'm going to do is test it and see if I'm even on the right path. So I'm going to grab the basic process and I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab a dispose block. And for right now, just for testing purposes, I'm going to connect both of these up to the dispose block. This thing doesn't serve any purpose right now other than running a little bit of a test and see how this thing's going to turn out. Then I'm going to slow my speed way down, down to nothing, because I really want to be able to see if these cars are going to drive in and do what I expect. Now, the decide block right now isn't deciding anything, is it? Yeah. But don't we also have to change the resource? We don't have any resources right now. So the decide block, we will have to change the resource. You are correct. The decide block, though, what I want it to do on the decide block, it's fine. 50% two-way by chance. For testing, that means half of them are going to go here, half of them are going to go here. For testing purposes, to see if my routing is even is even in the ballpark, this is a good way to test it out. So I'm going to go back up to the top, and I'm going to go ahead and hit run. We'll see what happens here. A whole lot of nothing, huh? Hit stop. Try to run it one more time. So I'm seeing I'm seeing cars down at the bottom, but I'm not seeing them up on the top. Yeah, they aren't, are they? Oh, and you know what? Because we're missing something. This is good. This is good. All right. So here's what we need to do: stop your model. So you can actually tell that the problem is is they're going to the routes, but they're not going down to your stations. So what you're going to do is stop your model if it'll stop. Oh, that's not good. I sped it up and it stopped. That might help. See if that stops for you. All right, here's what we need to do. In your route blocks, double click on your route block. And you'll notice that the destination, so there's two things here. Um, yeah, we're going to do it by station, but the destination station should not be station one because that's that would be taking it back to here, wouldn't it? So for route one, it needs to be station two. And now the route time, this is where we start to build in some non-value added time. So if I put in a route time of, let's say, 0.2 hours, you know, I don't know, 0.1 hours. It seems like a lot. You can do it in minutes. You can do whatever you want. I'm going to make it 0.1 hours just because my, I know my arrivals are in hours right now. I don't want to change everything. So this is going to route in 0.1 hours. And it's going to go to station two. This one's going to route in 0.1 hours but it's going to go to station three. You, got, you agree? Now what should happen is these should actually route. Now do one other thing for me real quick. Let's, let's turn on some run setup so that this thing only runs for like the, uh, the, yeah, the replication link be five hours or something. You know, I don't want it to, you know, if, if, if it's going to fail or go into an infinite loop or something, I really want it to stop. And this will this will build in a stop for me, okay? So then I'm going to go ahead and go to run. I'm going to run slow again. I'm going to run it slow. There we go. Notice where your cars are going. And you'll notice sometimes they go to spot one. Sometimes they go to spot two. Does that make sense? Now, now, is it working? So you can always stop it. I'm going to pause my... All right. So the, the trouble I have with, with this particular example right now is that we don't have any process for how long do the cars stay. You know, so if this is a store 
if the average customer you know arrives every five minutes that's all fine and good but how long do they stay and how often do they leave based upon how long they stay so what we need to do is I need to stop the model and now what we need to do is come down here and instead of just going to the station and being disposed of we know that station two and station three are actually the parking stalls right so now what I can do is I can come in here and put a process on each one of these and the process essentially is going to be well how long is my customer going to stay in the store is my customer going to stay for an hour is my customer going to stay for 30 minutes and that's and, that, and by, by all means that's a distribution so I could give you as I could give you that average times you know I could give you a distribution for average times or I could also um, give you a bunch of data from a time study and and you could use the input analyzer to determine those those distributions um, but what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make some up for the purpose of animation tonight and we'll call process one will be uh, stall one time and we'll do a seize delay release we'll add a resource I'm gonna call it stall one so basically this basically the parking stall is a resource and how how long do people usually use that resource for well I kind of like the tree up 0.51 1.5 I think that looks great okay and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other one this will be stall two time seize delay release what did we call the resource on the other one stall one we'll call this stall two Tria 0.51 1.5 so I've got stall one oop I gotta be careful I called it stall one with no spaces so I'm gonna call this one stall two with no spaces try to I want to try to use uh, similar syntax similar naming conventions but now what's gonna happen is um, basically there's gonna be a car sitting there now what I'll tell you is it's not quite as as trivial as you might think um, the way you're going to do this, well, let me ask you this. How do I know when this is in process? Or how can I show this is in process? Well, when there's a queue, it tells me there's people waiting. It tells me there's one in process, but there's people waiting. But I also can show with the indicator, right? The resource indicator. So the resource indicator is, where is it? Resource. So here's your resource indicator. So what you can do is you can come into this resource indicator and you have idle, you have busy, you have all these different things. You can then open up, I don't like my machines library. I want to open up a different library. Um, where are they? Here they are. So if you go into the arena folder, it up a few times you can get into there's I think there's actually a vehicle see vehicles picture library yes. double click on that there's all your vehicles now if the van is in here we'd be golden there's the van see it yes. now what I want you to do is click on that van click on busy and I want you to add that van to busy how about that and you can delete well you don't delete well yeah delete I'm gonna delete inactive and I'm going to delete failed we're not going to have a parking stall fail we could but we're not going to but when it's idle it's going to be nothing and when it's busy it's going to show that and I wonder I wonder if I even want idle to show up I'm going to I'm going to delete idle too so what I did was I clicked on this van so it was highlighted then I clicked on busy so it was highlighted and you see this little left arrow it moves the van into the busy see how that works now you need to give it the identifier so this needs to be the stall one resource so this is going to tell me when the stall one resource is busy does that make sense yep. now I'm going to hit OK and what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll up to where this would be do you see how it's giving me the little drawing tool I'm going to draw that guy right there so when the stall is busy it's going to show a car sitting there. Does that make sense? Yep. 
So now we're going to have to do that for the other one. We're going to go into that, that resource menu again. All right. The identifier is going to be stall two this time. I'm going to delete idle. I'm going to delete inactive. I'm going to delete failed. And I'm going to go down to my vehicles and find the van and add that into busy again. And this will be for stall two. And for stall two, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to place him right there. So now when the stalls are busy, you're actually going to see the stalls be busy. Does that make sense, Mona? Yeah. All right. So, so, so now we're closer. We're not there, but we're closer. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go back into our run. And kind of watch. Oop, there was an error. May not have write permissions to the directory where Arena is trying to create the file. Try saving your model to a directory where you have write permissions. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to hit file, save as. So they want us to save it there? Yeah, and I think the reason why they want us to save it is because we've actually imported a picture library and a couple other things. So they want us to save it. So I'm going to find my ing folder. For the course 4210 and I'm gonna go into my arena files and I'm gonna call this my parking lot demo and hit save and now when I hit play it shows the vans coming in <laughs> so here's the problem there's two two problems here um, the first problem, well, there's really only one problem. The problem I have right now is what's happening is one parks and they keep piling upon each other, don't they? This isn't good. Okay. However, we're closer, aren't we? So here's what we need to do next. What we need to do next is I'm not going to save this. What we need to do next is we need to look and say, is the stall busy? If the stall's busy, don't send a car there. Yeah. So right now, our decide block, yeah, it's, it's just sending them randomly. Yeah. We don't want to send them randomly, randomly. We want to make a decision, all right? So here's what I want to do. I'm going to pause. All right, so the problem we were having was when we hit run, the cars are parking, and they're just stacking up on top of each other. So we're not actually, our decide block isn't doing anything. It's just sending them half this way, half that way, randomly. Yeah, oh, we can totally do that. Yeah, so now here's what we're going to do, though. First, is we're going to look at the decide block. And we're going to decide which lane to send. Instead of by chance, we're going to send it by condition. Right now, if I run... You notice when I run, I think the first two actually go into the first spot. Watch. So the first two go in the first spot, and we know that every time I do it, it pretty much comes up the same thing. One, two, boom. So we need that first one to go in the first spot, occupy it, and then the next one go into the second spot. And that, that'll be the first part of the solution, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say, in the decide block, instead of two-way by chance, we're going to do two-way by condition. And we'll look at an expression. And right now I'm going to leave it as one. And I'm going to hit OK. Where do you think I'm going to go next? Expression. Yep, so I'll go to the expression builder. And I'm going to look at the resource menu. And, and under the resource menu, there's usage. Now, I don't know which one's going to be the one I want. I think number busy. Um... Yeah, current number busy, and look at stall one, and say, is that equal to one? Or if, is it equal to zero? If it's equal to zero, so if I go back and look at that side block, make this a little, oh, I can't make it any smaller. If the number in stall one, busy in stall one, is zero, then I'm going to use route one. Else, I would use route two. So let's try that. We know that the first two go into stall one. Hopefully, if that's the fix, then this time around, they'll go one, two. So I get one, 
No, no luck. Now they're all going into one. All right, so that didn't help. So let's go back down. Oh, you know what? I never put it in there, though. <laughs> so I need to paste that in there. So number busy, stall one, is it equal to zero? I need to paste that in there. Then go to run. Yeah, now, there we go. So now, stall one works good. The next time stall one opens up, it sends one there. However, stall two is messing up now, right? So what we need to do now, and I wonder if we can, if it's as simple as, can we do a, uh, you no, know, my decide block. Um, what if we do an end way by condition? Um, let's see. So number stall one equal to zero. Could I do expression number and stall two equal to zero? Else. So now essentially what I have is now I have two possibilities here. So what I'm going to change something here. So let me zoom in on this so you can see what I'm talking about here. So what it's saying is, it's saying right here, is the number install one equal to zero? Yes, go this way. Or is the number install two equal to zero? Yes, go this way. Else, go this way. So I haven't really solved where you go Correct. if stall two is full yet. However, I want to see if this is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and wire this up. Go back to 58%. Yeah, and I'm going to run it. I'm going to see what happens if, if uh, I don't have an else condition, and it might not, yeah. So it's not going to, it's not going to like the unconnected else position. So, so here's what we're going to do then. What we're going to do for the sake, let's pretend for a second that our parking lot only has two spaces. So, so what happens if the lot is full? Well, they, yeah, they could go home, or they could loop around, driving around looking for a spot. Or they could wait. You know, there's all kinds of things. So let's create another route. Let's create another route from a station to a station. So I'm going to go to Advanced Transfer. I'm going to create another route, which is going to be my else condition. This will be Route 3. And this will be my else condition. And so Route 3 is going to route me to Station... And you know what? I'm not against Route 3 routing me back to station well no you know what yeah i guess i'm not against it routing me back to station one so but i'm going to make its time i want to give it a time of point one so it actually consumes some time to get there the reason why i say i'm not against it routing me back to station one let me think here You know what? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to make it go to station four. So I'll hit cancel here for a second. Yeah, we're going to create another station, and I'm going to create a station here called station four. And station four, I'm thinking, can feed right into that decide block again. Actually, you know what Station 4 can do? Station 4 might be able to feed right into our Station 1 block. And so what I'll do is, assuming all the spots are full, I'll drive around the big loop and end up back at Station 1 and start all over again. Do you know what I'm saying? So let's try this. So Station 4 is going to go there. Route 3 is going to be 0.1 hours, and it's going to route me to Station 4. And then, so Route 3 takes me to Station 4, 0.1 hours. Station 4 is here, and it's going to end up dumping me to Station 1. Okay. 
Um, so what I'm going to do in my animate block is I need to route, I need route three to go from station one to station four. But I need station one to station four to look like from there back to there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a route. I'm going to go from station, what was it, station three to station four? No, 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 it's station one to station four. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the same point. Boom. I'm going to drive up to here. I'm going to drive around. I'm going to determine I can't get in there, so I'm going to drive over here. Drive over here. And drive back down to underneath it. I don't know that it's the perfect scenario, but I think what's going to happen now is you've got three possibilities. Um, possibility one is I drive in and I go into stall one. Possibility two is I drive in and go to stall three. Possibility three is I drive in, don't see what I want, loop around, and then come back and drive in again. So I'm going to go to run, see what happens. Stall one, stall two, yeah. It's a little goofy to look at here. Don't look at your flow chart. Look up, look up top. You know, it's kind of bouncing back and forth. Do you see that? Yeah, mine's not doing that. Yours isn't doing that? Let me let me come over and take a look. From here. For our first for our very first animation we've ever done. Well, this this is pretty complex. I mean, what I have right now is when this guy goes. The spots fill up, and then he drives around. Now, I don't like the way he drives around, you know, so I'm not a big fan of this last one that I did. You know, this one right here. I'm kind of perturbed with that one, so I'm going to delete that one. And I'm going to try to grab, get rid of that station. And what I would prefer to do, I think, is, you know, and I might even move, oops, You know, I might even move this station up. Oops. Because now if I do something like that, if I think I put in, if I put in the route that goes from station one to station four, which is what I wanted, right? Now I think I'm going to have him drive around like this. And now instead of dipping back below, he'll end up just kind of, Oh, yeah, I lost it, didn't I? Route. Oh, crud, I didn't lose it, though. Where did it go? So one thing you can always do... Hmm... I think I lost my... Uh, Lost that last route. Let's try it one more time. Route. Go from there to there to there to there to there. And I need to double click on that guy so I can actually see. I got him set up wrong now, too. Oh, crud. Yeah, well, I shouldn't have to. Um, I think what you can do, you know, that's called station five. I think you can double click on that and make that station four. Yeah. And then you got to find the other one. This is station four. I can make this station one. So I can switch those around once they're in. They're just kind of hard to, they can be a little hard to grab a hold of, you know what I mean? So, but now I think if I run this again, I think what I'm going to see, well, sometimes the first time through, you got to reset it. So there's one, two. Yeah, I'm not really. So you kind of not want. You don't even want to look at. Yeah. Notice something when one of those spots opens up. What sometimes happens is is you'll see two cars pull into it because there aren't any busy at that point. So we may have to come up with a different, you know, scenario. But look how close we are. You know, I mean, we're getting really, really close to to our. Our desired result here. Um, what I like is when you when you see it uh, 
when that first spot opens up and there's two cars kind of floating around in the circle here, like that, or three, as soon as that spot opens up, they all jam into there, <laughs> you know? And the reason why is because initially they get put onto that route while it isn't busy, you know what I mean? Because it takes 0.1 hours to get over to there. So they get put on that route before it's busy. So we could do other things. We could look at, you know, is there a car on the route? Is the thing busy? You know, what is the status of it? But we've come, we've actually come quite a long ways on this. So if I wanted to add another one, you know, what I would do, it would be as simple as coming down here and saying, okay, you know, there's my route three, but I could create another route. Now this is where it gets messy. If you don't, if you don't take into account all your routes up front, then what happens is now I'm going to put a route in here, but it's going to be the wrong number. You know what I mean? So, so, but I, but I'm okay with that. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add another one. I'm going to say expression. And I still have the, I still have it in here. I'm going to say stall two, zero. Or actually it'll be stall. Oh, crud. Let me delete these real quick. So I add an expression. And I look at is stall one zero. I add another one. Expression is stall two zero. And then I add another one as an expression is stall three zero. I hit OK. I hit OK. Now one, two, and three are going to hook up to these guys. Now I want to make sure I get one, I get two, and I get three. And I need to know that route one takes me to station two. Route two takes me to station three. Route three takes me to station four. That's my looping though. You see how my, my, my numbers are screwed up now? So route four is actually going to have to take me to station five. And I can create another one of these. Just paste it in even. And this will be stall three time. With stall three as a resource. With a similar setup as the other ones we're using. Wire him up the same way. And I want to make sure that Route 4 winds up taking me to Station 5. And I'm going to use that 0.1 route time again. So it's kind of a non-value added time, remember. So your route time is just transportation time. Storage and transportation, your customers aren't real concerned about that. You know, nobody wants to pay for shipping, right? So nobody wants to pay to move their product around. So I hit OK. I go back up, I look, Route 4 goes to Station 5. Station 5 is down there, I like it. Route 3 goes to 4. That's going to be my looping. I still need to come up here and I need to create the actual route segment that goes from Station 1 to Station 5. And what that's going to be is that's going to be another route segment that goes from Station 1 to station five. And I'm gonna click approximately where station one is. I'm gonna drive over, drive up, drive over, double click. And that's where I'm gonna put station five. There's a lot to this, right? Um, but what you're essentially doing is you're telling, you know, if you're doing a shop floor at this point, you'd be telling where the forklift to drive. You know, where are you gonna drive to pick up your parts? Where are you gonna deliver your parts to? Um, you know, uh, where is the truck going to park at the dock? You know, all of these things have to be built into the program. Now I have one thing left. I need to come into that stall three time. I see that I have stall three as a resource. Yep. So I need to create another resource. Now here's something nice, Moto. Watch this. Click on that resource, hit control C, click away, hit control V. And just paste it. But when you paste it, the only thing that you have to do is you need to double click on it now. And, and you need to change it to stall three. Do you know what I'm saying? 
So because you've already used it before, you're more than welcome to to uh, to copy and paste it. But make sure you change the attribute. Make sure you change the variable that's assigned to that resource name. And if you've done everything right, you can see we've added uh, another stall. So one, two, and three get filled. And then I start looping. How about that? Oh, and it's working better now too, by the way. Well, not quite. <laughs> it's working a little better. But it, it's getting closer. It's getting closer and closer and closer. Each time we do a little bit more, it's like, okay, this is starting to make sense. I'm filling up three stalls. You know, I could add a fourth stall. I could add a fifth stall, six stall, seven stall. I got seven stalls in my lot right now. So I could add all of those. And remember, because the stall wait time is, it is a, it is a probability distribution function. Sometimes they stay for half an hour. Sometimes they stay for an hour and a half. Some, you know, the most common would be an hour. So there is a little bit of probability built into this. Um, but I could very easily determine if the parking lot is sufficient for the number of customers. I could run a simulation and build the parking lot model to see if it's sufficient for the number of customers. I also will, will be able to tell the traffic jams. I'll be able to see where the cars are traveling the most, you know, and I can build into side blocks based upon traffic, based upon all kinds of different things. So I'm going to hit save on this. And real quick, I'm going to pull up uh, the homework for this week. You and I are going to take a peek at it here. Because I don't actually remember. So for the homework for this week, we've actually got a head start on it in that um, what you're going to do on worksheet 10 is very similar. You're going to have to rebuild the parking lot because now we're going to have cars arriving and departing from a five stall parking lot using the statistical information shown below. Use uh, route and animation features to animate the, this uh, model simulation. Parking lot should include an entrance road and an exit road. Any entity that arrives to a full lot will loop around the lot until space is available. Now, a big difference from anything we've done in the past is, so the entity picture is going to be a van, dump truck. You can use what you want. Don't use airplanes or something. But the inner arrival time is going to be normal 9.11 minutes. That's your inner arrival rate. Um, your maximum arrivals, this is a change. This is a complete change from the way we've ever done business in this class, meaning normally we run for 1,000 hours. Instead of running for 1,000 hours, we're going to run for 100 entities is what we're going to do. We will not have a normal stop time. So instead of a normal stop time, what I want you to do is I want you to create entities per arrival one, but a maximum arrivals of 100 entities. That's going to determine when this thing is going to finish its route. Does that make sense? So it's not going to be based upon running for a week or 10,000 hours or any of that stuff. It's going to be based upon when all 100 entities have processed through the system. Now, what we did for the parking space process was we made it a constant 35 minutes. What this is going to do is it's going to normalize it. Now, parking lots aren't normalized, okay? But for your first animation run, run I don't want six cars arriving at the same time. Now, in the real world, that can happen. But I don't want that for your first animation program that you write. So, so I so I want cars kind of leaving on more of a schedule, you know, and and trying to uh, spaces opening up fairly regularly, not six cars all attacking the same space at the same time or six cars leaving at once. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to look at the utilization percentage for each, each space. So you'll run this to completion. A lot owner feels he needs to add spaces, and you need to determine if you support his findings. If you're finding support this, rather. Does that make sense? Yep. Think you can do it? Yep. You've got a, a big head start, and you should be off and running. So that will conclude tonight's lecture. Good luck on the homework.